Soon after the Bab's visit, the number of believers in Kashan increased, and persecution started. One day, a number of ruffians attacked the believers, took their possessions, and broke the doors and windows of their house where they had gathered. Fearing for his life, Ahmad hid in the wind tower of the house and remained there for forty days. His friends brought him food and water in secret. Many dangerous and demoralizing years went by. The Bab was imprisoned in remote regions of northern Persia to prevent him from communicating with his followers. He was given a mock trial in Tabriz and finally, on July 9, 1850, was executed by order of the powerful Amir Kabir, Mirza Taki Khan, Prime Minister to the newly crowned Naziridin Shah. His followers were mercilessly persecuted and exterminated. Of all those who appeared capable of carrying on the Bab's cause, Baha'u'llah alone remained. All the rest had fallen by the sword of the enemy. The faith the Bab had proclaimed and for which he had given his life had reached its lowest ebb. Amidst the shadows that were fast gathering about it, the figure of Baha'u'llah alone exhibited the courage, the vision, and wisdom capable of reviving the fortunes of an expiring faith. Then when the faith seemed to be at the brink of extinction, an attempt on the life of the Shah precipitated a persecution even more terrible than any that had hitherto taken place, a catastrophe which drew into its vortex the person of Baha'u'llah himself. He was so crushed by the severity of that storm that no recovery seemed possible. He was robbed of all his possessions in Nur and Tehran, falsely denounced as the instigator of the failed assassination attempt, abandoned by his former friends, plunged into a dark and pestilential dungeon, and finally driven into hopeless exile beyond the confines of his native land. Naziruddin Shah prided himself on being the destroyer of the Babi movement. He imagined, as he sat musing over the successive stages of that vast and bloody enterprise, that by the act of banishment which his hand had signed, he was sounding the death knell of that detestable heresy. Now that the Bab was no more, now that the mighty pillars that sustained his cause had been smashed into dust, now that the mass of its devotees throughout the length and breadth of his dominion were cowed and exhausted, now that Baha'u'llah himself the one remaining hope of a leaderless community had been driven into exile. The specter that had haunted him ever since he had ascended the throne had seemingly vanished forever.